Good afternoon, Mrs. Vogel. Uh, we, the Vietnamese American people in Virginia, but we have a few concerns to bring to your attention. I think a few months ago, Governor McAuliffe welcomed a businessman from the communists of Vietnam, and um, we want to uh, challenge that because the communist Vietnamese government commit atrocities against its people, especially the Wahao Buddhists. They slit the throat of a few believers. They isolated them and didn't let them get any uh, food supply and uh, a lot of other uh, tactics like that. Um, do you have any plan to help us to bring that to the attention of the government and to try to stop those atrocities? Yes, and I'm so grateful first to have the chance to visit with you and incredibly grateful for your support and very grateful to have the opportunity to speak to this because the persecution that has happened in Vietnam against the Wahao and others is indefensible. Mm -hmm. And for the Commonwealth of Virginia to embrace that and to allow representatives of that government to come here mm -hmm. as if they were credible and not challenge them for their horrible atrocities and for the way they have governed and for the way they have exploited their own citizens. Mm -hmm. It is our responsibility, those of us who are friends to the Vietnamese community, those of you who are active in the Vietnamese community, to stand up and call it wrong. And I am truly sorry that the government of Virginia was engaged that way. And all I can say is, is that we need to elect people who are sensitive and who understand and who pay attention and who understand that it's more than just welcoming a delegation mm -hmm. of people, that you give them credibility and you empower people to continue to do bad things if you embrace them and welcome them without calling them out. And so my commitment to the community is, is to call people out and hold people accountable and to support your community, which is our community. It is a community that is so important and so invested. And this region of Virginia contributes so much to our economy, to healthcare, to jobs, the technology sector, to education. And so it's indeed a real slap when that happens in Virginia. And all I can say is I am so committed to stand with you and so honored to be with you today. Thank you so much. Um, I have another question. Is there any way that you could somehow influence the government here to stop welcoming them and stop their um, uh, plan to uh, create like seven industry uh, sectors and um, uh, they like to like expand and also sponsor a few of the, I think six of the uh, cities over in Vietnam? Well, so the entire focus and policy, um, the policy direction of the Commonwealth of Virginia is decided by the governor's administration, working with the lieutenant governor, and as you know, I'm running for lieutenant governor, yes. and working with the attorney general. And so the policies that the governor embraces when it comes to the conversation that we're having about economic development and embracing people who've come from Vietnam, who represent a communist government, that have committed atrocities that are deeply offensive to the Vietnamese community in Virginia. All I can say is, is that I'm 100% committed to stand with an administration that would take a different policy position, that would not embrace that, and it would work with our community here and work with the Vietnamese community towards the kind of policies that they want, mm -hmm. both in the, the United States, in Virginia specifically, in our community, and also for their family at home in Vietnam, for the people that they want to advocate for and for the lives that they're fighting to save. And so I can just tell you that uh, strong leadership in the Commonwealth of Virginia, making those decisions in the best interest of the Vietnamese community will make the difference because that's who makes that decision. It's the governor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Mrs. Vogel. Uh, we will support you, and we really love all of your uh, humanistic concern for us, the uh, immigrants here. We will do our best to help your campaign. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's an honor to be able to stand with the community and to have the community be willing to stand with me and collaborate and be supportive and be a part of how it is that we plan to lead mm -hmm. when we govern the Commonwealth of Virginia and we want you to be there with us. So thank you so much yes. for having me. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, we have a question for you. How about a treaty that the, the governor already signed? So what do you think about that? You can continue or you want to so, look into so it? So the next administration, the next governor will have an opportunity to go back 
and review agreements and treaties and memorandums of understanding. And the mm -hmm. next governor will have a different view. Governor, uh, governor Gillespie, who will be the next governor, I believe, is a very enlightened person who's very culturally sensitive. Mm -hmm. He lives in this region of Virginia. He is from here. He understands the concerns of the Vietnamese community and will be very, very engaged and will be listening, most importantly, because that's what it means to be a good governor yes. and to be a good leader is to listen and to have your community involved. And so when whether it's this treaty or this agreement or any others that are not in the best interest of the community, you can be sure that this governor will stand up and do the right thing. And I, as the next lieutenant governor, I hope, will be there to be supportive, to stand and make those good decisions on behalf of the community. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Dr. Manchano. Uh, we would like to ask you about the um, recent agreement between Governor, the governor of Virginia, McAuliffe. Uh, he signed the agreement with hundreds of uh, uh, businessmen in communist Vietnam. And we know that uh, the communist Vietnamese have been committing lots of uh, atrocities and they jail the good people, the dissidents, and um, they are next to like the um, uh, communist Korean, the North Korean. Do you have any plan, any uh, way of uh, influencing the government uh, here to stop dealing with the communist Vietnamese? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, we have actually been working with, in partnership with Boat People SOS and Dr. Thang, and other community leaders here in Northern Virginia to address this particular issue, and that is the Memorandum of Understanding that was signed as a cooperative for future trade agreement with the six provinces, the leadership of the six provinces, did not, did not incorporate, not one, not one voice of us, the Vietnamese community here in Virginia at all. And the issue is that nothing in that Memorandum of Understanding, as it stands today, has any trade integrity protection for the business owners, the potential entrepreneurs, we all want opportunities to expand our businesses, to expand trade with other countries. However, it has to be done with integrity and it has to be done with consideration that the country that we're dealing with understand and protect human rights and that people that are investing their hard-earned money here in the United States, in Vietnam, that their investment is in fact protected within what is known to be a very corrupt government, a government that does not protect its own people, that violates human rights and also persecutes religious freedom. So we must incorporate considerations of our Vietnamese business leaders when we develop treaties, memorandums of understanding or any trade agreement but to have zero participation is totally unacceptable and so we are as as a community as a group addressing that particular issue and for whatever govern, uh, governor gets elected uh, we will continue that fight so we need to get this done because it cannot repeat itself and it should not go any further so we are asking for a revocation of that memorandum of, of understanding because it is totally unacceptable does not protect and does not take into consideration the thousands of vietnamese americans that the vietnam government has expropriated their lands without fair consideration or compensation of any kind we cannot allow that as americans and we as Vietnamese American community cannot allow that to have any further life. So we are all for revocation of that memorandum of understanding as it currently stands. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Manchano. I have another uh, question that's very close, very dear to our heart. Recently, the communists and the Viet Cong sent um, at least two men wearing the Viet Cong flag and they parade around the Eden Center 
we felt very um, uh, hurt, harassed, and uh, kind of like violated. They violated our uh, rights, our environment. Do you have any plans to help us to stop those things from happening? That's another issue we've been working on very strongly with Boat People SOS. And there's very different vectors that we can use, different, different ways that we can use to attack this situation. Now, we all understand as Americans, we have freedom of speech. We have freedom to demonstrate. But that does not mean that we have freedom to harass a peaceful people in a place that it engages with quality of life and entertainment and just family time which is the Eden Center for the Vietnamese community and for others in Fairfax County. So we are working as community leaders. We have Vietnamese leaders, Vietnamese American leaders, that are working with Boat People SOS to attack this particular issue from different dimensions, from a legal perspective of how can we put constraints and ensure that there is no harassment of the businesses and the territory. But at the same time, that we the people, together the community, rise up and take a stand against any type of harassment that comes to the community. So we are actually being emboldened to take a stand ourselves and show these folks that are trying to harass, trying to put their political agenda and intimidate because we understand they start taking pictures and sending them back to the home country and tormenting the people back in Vietnam. We're not going to accept that. So together as community, we're going to fight it, but at the same time, we're going to take legal action to ensure that this does not continue. I just want to share. I have become now uh, a personal friend of so many in the Vietnamese community here in Northern Virginia. And I just want to ask you for this particular time. This is a vote that is very important like never before. We have an open seat in a district that is highly diverse, that has a huge Vietnamese population. In fact, my opponent is Vietnamese. Yet, it is I who have been working closely hand in hand, marching, fighting together with the Vietnamese community. Not because I'm Vietnamese, but because I love America. And because the Vietnamese community is America today. And because we want liberty, we want freedom, we want prosperity. As an immigrant, my parents suffered and worked hard so that I can today be in front of you as a doctor, as an engineer, as a business owner, as a college professor. And my commitment to you is a personal pledge to fight right along with you because we're fighting for the American dream. I want you to make history with it, me, with us. Be the first time that the Vietnamese community comes in full force to vote November 7th for Lolita Mancheno Smoke, an immigrant just like you, a fighter just like you for a beautiful, Northern Virginia. Thank you.